ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're here to talk about density and buoyancy. Now, just a quick review. You'll remember density is literally how tightly packed the molecules of the substance are. So when the molecules are really close together, the density is high. When the molecules are farther apart, the density is low. It's important to remember that the molecules or atoms do not change size, although the actual substance can. We'll get to an example of that in just a second. Now, you might remember from my density video uh, last time, that introduction video, I had a little map with the um, lights, and we said where there's a lot of lights together, um, like the northeast where we live, high density of lights. If we look up towards the north into Canada, very, very low density of lights. Um, we went back to that example. We talked about the, the size of the substance, not molecules, substance changing. And an example of that would be... Um, you know, when you think about from seventh grade, the ball and ring experiment, your teacher had a ball and a ring. They put the ball through the ring, heated the ball up, and then the ball would, come, would not come back out. The reason for that is as a substance is heated up, the molecules literally get farther apart. Molecules or atoms are the same size, but they get farther apart, and this causes the volume of the substance to increase. The opposite thing happens when the substance cools off. Those molecules are going to start to come closer together. Same size molecules, but as those molecules come closer together, the substance itself will shrink a little bit or get smaller. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the density of water. And you might be wondering, why water? Well, first off, water covers most of the Earth's surface. And another reason is that water is the most common substance you're going to come in contact with. It's almost everywhere when you think about it. You can't go a day without coming into contact with water in some way, shape, or form. So last year you probably talked about the density of water, but this year we're going to go just a little step further. It's important to note that the information I'm about to tell you is on your reference tables on the front page, and I've got a little picture of it there to show you where that looks like. Take those reference tables out see if you can find it now that you have them. So you'll notice that it says a very specific temperature. It says 3.98 degrees Celsius. And that's the actual temperature when water has its highest density, which is, do you remember from last year? Of course, it's 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter or 1.0 grams per milliliter. Doesn't matter whether you use the cubic centimeters or milliliters, it's really the same thing. So it's important that you remember that water has a density of 1.0 at that 3.98 degrees Celsius. Now generally when we're talking about something in its buoyancy in water, we're just going to assume or work with the idea that water has a density of 1.0, even though it might be slightly a little bit different depending on what the temperature of that water is. So hope you wrote that down. So the next thing we're going to talk about is buoyancy. And that is how an object behaves when it's placed in water and whether it'll sink or whether it'll float and exactly where it will float. So when you put a substance in water, its density determines what it's going to do. If its density is greater than water, and of course we remember the density of water is 1.0. So if its density is above that, so 1.1 or 3 or 8 or 10 million, that substance is going to sink to the bottom. Um, if a substance density is less than water, so 0 0.9 or anything less than that, it will float. And the farther or lower its density is from 1, the higher it's going to float. And you'll see a little bit of uh, a picture of how that goes in just a second. Um, if something has a density of exactly 1, it will neither sink nor float. It will be suspended, which means below the surface but not touching the bottom in that column of water. And that's just, you don't come into contact with that very, uh, very often, but it's something that you might need to know. So now that you've done that, I just want to review how to calculate density, ladies and gentlemen, and go over the density triangle. So we're going to take a look at how to use the density triangle, ladies and gentlemen, and what the density triangle is, is, well, it's a triangle. 
that we put the density equation into. And if you remember, density last year, you probably used D equals M over V, or density equals mass divided by volume. So in the density triangle, we do the same thing. You'll see the mass is over the volume. Now, how we use this is by covering up what we're looking for. So if we're looking for density, it would be density equals mass divided by volume. I know that because the M is over the V. If I'm looking for volume, so volume is equal to mass divided by density. I know this because the M is on top of the, the D. So I would write volume equals mass divided by density. If I'm looking for the mass, mass is equal to, now you'll notice density and volume are next to each other. So it's density times volume. So that's how you use the density equation. So let's practice using the density triangle here. You'll notice that in the direction it tells us to round to the nearest tenth. That means that we need a number on either side of the decimal and definitely one in the tenths place, even if those numbers are zero. So I read through my equation here, and I'm going to set up my density triangle. Then I'm going to plug the, number, the numbers in with units, and it's important to plug the numbers in with units as we'll see in a second. So my mass is 30.0 grams. My volume is 3.0 milliliters. And I'm looking for my density. So I'll go to my calculator, and you'll see it's 30 divided by 3. So 30 divided by 3 equals 10. Now, of course, I'll remember to the nearest tenth, so since there is no number in the tenth, I'll hold that place with a zero, sandwiching my decimal. My units, you'll see I have grams here, a line, and then milliliters, so my units are grams per milliliter. Here's a problem, ladies and gentlemen, where we're trying to find the mass. So again, I start off with my density triangle. I plug my numbers in. I'm looking for mass. Whoop. So you'll notice these numbers are next to each other. So I'm going to multiply 3 times 2.7, and that gets me 8.1. Now I'm going to think, what are the units for mass? Hmm, I know I use a triple beam, but oh, that's right, it's grams. So my answer would be 8.1 grams. So the last one I'm going to do here, you'll see I'm trying to find volume. So of course, like the others, I start off with the density triangle, and density equals mass divided by volume plug in what they've given me. I'm looking for volume here, so the density is 5.0 grams per cubic centimeter. My mass is 30.0 grams. Because the 30 is over the 5, I'm going to divide. 30 divided by 30 divided by 5 is equal to 6. Again, I have to sandwich that decimal because it says to the nearest tenth, so since it's just 6, I need a number there, I'll put a 0. And my unit for volume, I could either put cubic centimeters or I could put milliliters. These two units are equivalent to each other, so you can use either one. So now that we've learned a little bit about density, we've got, of course, a few problems for you to do. So uh, take some time, do them, see how it works out, and um, we'll get back to you with the answers in just a second. Hopefully your answers are similar to mine. Uh, if not, please let me know through a Wix mailer in class. After all, you are responsible for knowing how to do this, and I'm here to help. So I hope you enjoyed the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions, please hit me up through Wix. See me uh, in class, and we'll get there. Take it easy.